We get uh, chert nodules uh, in great big giant balls. We get stuff about the size of your head, and then we get slabs like this. I'll show you some of these as they poke out of a cliff face down there. And this is what they're here afterward. And you can see here's another one that's the size of your head, you know, really nice chert. When we think of flint napping, and we call it flint napping, it's a little old guy, usually a hobbyist at an archaeological fair, chipping away at a stone or something. And instead of thinking of it as flint napping, an unfortunate thing we call it, Let's think of it as three-dimensional stone sculpture. It got a lot harder just by renaming it, didn't it? <laughs> you know, flint napping was a cottage industry in England. That's where they made gun flints, right? It was literally little old men out in front of cottages chipping these little gun flints. But three-dimensional stone sculpture, that's a lot more difficult. There's no difference between what these people were doing and what Michelangelo did. Michelangelo repeatedly through his life said he never sculpted anything in his life. He freed things from the stone. Now, that 1 in 50 has the potential, if they had the interest, uh, to become a sculptor, to actually make something. Well, if your group is 10 or 12 people, say you're really good at making projectile points, and she's really good at making blades, he makes a pretty good scraper. Well, how many people are going to use any one of those in your group of 10 or 12? Two or three? You can make them for everybody, right? So what if the group is 150? Are you going to make projectile points for everybody? Oh, hell no, you know, we hit that easy button go, you're on your own. When we look at Paleo-Indian tools, they tend to be really beautifully sculpted. When we look at archaic tools, they tend to be hideous. Grab some tools. Now, you can make almost any tool out of a biface. And even when you get down to this, and both of these I think are well on their way to being projectile points, I don't know why they quit, but even at this stage, I could have this as a knife, right? I could use it as a projectile point. I could use it as a scraper. I could use it as an ax or an adz. All depends on how I put it on the stick. So bifaces sometimes are used as tools, and sometimes they're made into more formal tools. So biface is kind of an informal tool. But yeah, you're really good paleo new ones. These are pretty stereotypical archaic bifaces from about 6,000 years ago. Not very pretty, are they? They're not very symmetrical. They sure as heck aren't very thin. I can use this as a knife, or an axe, or an adz, or a scraper. It'll work just as well as that. The edge is just as sharp. It's just not very pretty. And every once in a while, you'll find the perfect biface from the archaic. Because the sculptors are still around, but everybody else is on their own.